Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Friday, January 27th, 2022. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Job is continuing to speak, and today he is going to talk about wisdom, what a tremendous treasure it is, and how wisdom, uh, which comes from God, is not something that is very easily found. Surely there is a mine for silver and a place where gold is refined. Iron is taken from the ground and copper is smelted from ore. A miner puts an end to the darkness. He probes the deepest recesses for ore in the gloomy darkness. He cuts a shaft far from human habitation in places unknown to those who walk above ground. Suspended far away from people, the miners swing back and forth. Food may come from the earth, but below the surface, the earth is transformed as by fire. Its rocks are a source of lapis lazuli, containing flecks of gold. No bird of prey knows that path. No falcon's eye has seen it. Proud beasts have never walked on it. No lion has ever prowled over it. The miner uses a flint tool and turns up ore from the root of the mountains. He cuts out channels in the rocks and his eyes spot every treasure. He dams up the streams from flowing so that he may bring to light what is hidden. But where can wisdom be found? And where is understanding located? No one can know its value since it cannot be found in the land of the living. The ocean depths say, it's not in me, while the sea declares, I don't have it. Gold cannot be exchanged for it, and silver cannot be weighed out for its price. Wisdom cannot be valued in the gold of Ophir, in precious onyx or lapis lazuli. Gold and glass do not compare with it, and articles of fine gold cannot be exchanged for it. Coral and quartz are not worth mentioning. The price of wisdom is beyond pearls. Topaz from Cush cannot compare with it, and it cannot be valued in pure gold. Where then does wisdom come from, and where is understanding located? It is hidden from the eyes of every living thing and concealed from the birds of the sky. Abaddon and death say, we have heard news of it with our ears. But God understands the way to wisdom, and he knows its location. For he looks to the ends of the earth and sees everything under the heavens. When God fixed the weight of the wind and distributed the water by measure, when he established a limit for the rain and a path for the lightning, he considered wisdom and evaluated it. He established it and examined it. He said to mankind, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to turn from evil is understanding. For two chapters now, Paul has been encouraging the Christians in Corinth concerning their desire for spiritual gifts. He talked about the variety of spiritual gifts that God has in his church, and yet in even in that variety, there is unity in the church, just as a, our bodies are one body, yet made up of many parts, with all the parts serving different purposes and performing different functions. Then in chapter 13, Paul talked about the motivation behind the use of any spiritual gift, and that is love. Without love, no spiritual gift is worth anything. But with love, then these spiritual gifts are going to be worth a lot and be able to serve other people. And that really is what leads us to the conclusion of Paul's discussion of spiritual gifts here in chapter 14. Paul encourages the Christians in Corinth to pursue spiritual gifts, but especially those that can be used in service to others. Prophecy is one of those gifts. Prophecy is the proclamation of God's word. When you proclaim God's word to others in ways that they can understand, then they are built up, they are encouraged, and that is a wonderful way that you can show love for your fellow person. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts and especially that you may prophesy. For the person who speaks in a tongue is not speaking to people, but to God, since no one understands him. He speaks mysteries in the spirit. 
On the other hand, the person who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouragement, and consolation. The person who speaks in the tongue builds himself up, but the one who prophesies builds up the church. I wish all of you spoke in tongues, but even more that you prophesied. The person who prophesies is greater than the person who speaks in tongues, unless he interprets so that the church may be built up. So now, brothers and sisters, if I come to you speaking in tongues, how will I benefit you unless I speak to you with a revelation or knowledge or prophecy or teaching? Even lifeless instruments that produce sounds, whether flute or harp, if they don't make a distinction in the notes, how will what is played on the flute or harp be recognized? In fact, if the bugle makes an unclear sound, who will prepare for battle? In the same way, unless you use your tongue for intelligible speech, how will what is spoken be known? For you will be speaking into the air. There are doubtless many different kinds of languages in the world. None is without meaning. Therefore, if I do not know the meaning of the language, I will be a foreigner to the speaker, and the speaker will be a foreigner to me. So also you since all you are zealous for spiritual gifts, seek to excel in building up the church. Therefore, the person who speaks in the tongue should pray that he can interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my spirit is unfruitful. What then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will also pray with my understanding. I will sing praise with the spirit, and I will also sing praise with my understanding. Otherwise, if you praise with the Spirit, how will the outsider say amen at your giving of thanks, since he does not know what you are saying? For you may very well be giving thanks, but the other person is not being built up. I thank God I speak in tongues more than all of you. Yet in the church, I would rather speak five words with my understanding in order to teach others also than 10,000 words in a tongue. Brothers and sisters, don't be childish in your thinking, but be infants in regard to evil and adult in your thinking. It is written in the law, I will speak to this people by people of other tongues and by the lips of foreigners, and even then they will not listen to me, says the Lord. Speaking in tongues, then, is intended as a sign, not for believers, but for unbelievers, while prophecy is not for unbelievers, but for believers. If, therefore, the whole church assembles together and all are speaking in tongues and people who are outsiders or unbelievers come in, will they not say that you are out of your minds? But if all are prophesying and some unbeliever or outsider comes in, he is convicted by all and is called to account by all. The secrets of his heart will be revealed, and as a result, he will fall face down and worship God, proclaiming, God is really among you. What then, brothers and sisters, whenever you come together, each one has a hymn, a teaching, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Everything is to be done for building up. If anyone speaks in the tongue, there are to be only two, or at most three, each in turn, and let someone interpret. But if there is no interpreter, that person is to keep silent in the church and speak to himself and God. Two or three prophets should speak and the others should evaluate. But if something has been revealed to another person sitting there, the first prophet should be silent. For you can all prophesy one by one, so that everyone may learn and everyone may be encouraged. And the prophet's spirits are subject to the prophets, since God is not a God of disorder, but of peace. As in all the churches of the saints, the women should be silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but are to submit themselves, as the law also says. If they want to learn something, let them ask their own husbands at home, since it is disgraceful for a woman to speak in the church. Or did the word of God originate from you, or did it come to you only? If anyone thinks he is a prophet or spiritual, he should recognize that what I write to you is the Lord's command. If anyone ignores this, he will be ignored. So then, my brothers and sisters, be eager to prophesy, and do not forbid speaking in tongues. But everything is to be done decently and in order. 
And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.